This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Welcome in. It is the Wednesday, March 13th edition of the show. I am Gary. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures or just make it easy on yourself. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. The website has everything you need. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave some comments. Leave reviews. Share the show out. Tell everybody you know about it. Here is the rundown for today. We're talking about Odell Beckham Jr. going to Cleveland and exactly what that means. We're going to talk about Will Wade remaining suspended, the new article that came out from The Advocate uh, down in New Orleans, and I'm going to give you more college basketball picks. Went 1-3 and last night, not good. Uh, That puts us at 197, 174, and 7. That's after, and by the way, I will be updating this all the time. So go over to the website, winningcureseverything.com, go up to the gambling picks page, and you'll see the picks. They're there all the time. We had NC State plus one and a half today. We had Virginia Tech minus seven. I actually bought back a point on that one just to be on the safe side. Didn't need it, but either way, hurt the odds. That's okay. Not a big deal. We won both of them, which means we cashed. Always good. So 2-0 and today, 1-3 and last night. Gonzaga blew a money line for us. Nebraska, Omaha, I will never forgive them for what they did to me last night. Uh, either way, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them at tunicatravel.com. We will be at one of those sports books. We'll be at Samstown Casino in Tunica, March 21st, March 22nd. That is a Thursday and Friday. The first two days of the NCAA tournament, we're broadcasting live from inside the sports book. Come and check that thing out. Come out, have fun with us. We're spending the night on Thursday night. It's going to be a good time. we got people coming from Washington, D.C., uh, Oklahoma, Texas, South Carolina, et cetera, et cetera. There's a ton of people already confirmed to come and hang out. They're coming down to Tunica. You should, too, March 21st, March 22nd for the first two days of the NCAA tournament. We're going to be there all night, myself and Chris, the co-host. Uh, so check that thing out. You can find more information about the books or what to do down there at tunicatravel.com. Let's jump into the topics for today. Odell Beckham Jr. traded to the Cleveland Browns. The Giants got a first-round pick, a third-round pick, and Jabril Peppers. Not bad. Peppers will likely take over the spot that uh, that was freed up when Landon Collins uh, was gone as a free agent when they chose not to re-sign him or franchise him. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the Giants are going to do here. You've got a 38-year-old quarterback that's won two Super Bowls in the middle of a rebuild. So do you go out and trade for Josh Rosen because obviously the Cardinals are looking for a way to get away from him so that they can take Kyler Murray, or at least that is the rumor right now. Uh, Do you go and trade for Josh Rosen, which you could probably use that first-round pick that you just got in order to get that, or do you go and draft a quarterback this year? Somebody to sit behind Eli Manning and learn the offense, learn the system that they're putting in. Uh, Pat Shermer's got going on there at, at New York. My guess is they will probably trade for Rosen. I, from what I understand, they liked Rosen. They'll probably go get him, have him sit behind, and they probably got rid of Odell Beckham in order to do that. Odell Beckham is a cancer in the locker room. He has been forever. That's what he was with the Giants. The ego is crazy. You you cannot win if you have bad chemistry problems, and that's what the Giants had. Obviously, I don't think they are looking to win right now. They don't. They've got a terrible roster. So my guess is they go get Rosen. They use that first round pick that they just got to go get Rosen, and then you're set. Right? You're set up for a while. You're good to go. Uh, they probably, like I said, got rid of OBJ to cure the locker room, which means that Cleveland, for everybody that was excited and all the odds that came out and everything else, Cleveland brought a cancer into the locker room. Now, I would assume that they are going to be fine because Baker Mayfield has his own ego. He is incredibly confident in his abilities. And they now have a number one receiver. There's a ton of talent on the offensive side and in the school positions, right? Uh, we still got to see how the offensive line is going to hold up. Once they lost Joe Thomas, 
things were eh, a little more shaky than usual. But the running game was good. Mayfield was able to move the pocket. I think they're going to be okay. I'm curious to see what happens here because Freddie Kitchens, a first-time head coach, he was only a coordinator for, what, eight games last year? Like it was his first time calling plays, and now he's the head coach. He's a football guy. He's been around for a long time. Can he control this locker room? That's my question. Uh, The biggest rumor that came out after the OBJ thing was Dorsey, the GM, was still looking at moves, and the rumor was that Earl Thomas was coming to the Browns. Right, so the safety from um, the safety from the Seahawks that broke his leg in the middle of last season in a contract year, turns out he signed with the Ravens a four-year, fifty-five million dollar deal. So that is not happening. Now they need somebody to replace Peppers. There are plenty of safeties out there. They will find a safety, but Thomas was somebody that commanded respect in the locker room. He has a ring. I'm curious if they're going to find somebody like that to be able to control the defensive side anyway. Uh, the offensive side with Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb, I mean, it's Baker Mayfield, it's a ton of young guys with a lot of egos. I am very curious what's going to happen. This will be a lot of fun. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. A young head coach, or, or a new head coach, we'll say, uh, with a lot of young, new offensive skill players. Yes, they should be able to put up a bunch of numbers. We'll see what happens. This could end up being a team like the Rams, like the Chiefs, that just goes all out and is incredibly, I guarantee it will be entertaining. I guarantee that. Uh, So let's jump off of this. Let's talk about Will Wade. The New Orleans Advocate put out a story today. He will remain suspended through the NCAA tournament. At least that is the likelihood right now. Uh, He was advised by his legal counsel to not talk to LSU officials about what is going on with the FBI case. They, they advised him not to speak to them until after the federal trial, where he has been, sub, or he's going to be subpoenaed, one or the other. Um, but he's going to have to get up on the stand and talk about it. Now, whether he pleads the fifth or whatever, basically what they're doing, and this was a smart move, what they're doing is they're going to wait and see what the feds have on Will Wait. They're going to check and see if, if anybody actually has details of the deal that he made for Javante Smart. If nothing comes out, I mean, right now, LSU can't really do anything. You can't suspend him without pay if there's no proof that he did anything wrong. So right now, this is the smartest move that he could make. He told him, no, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to tell you anything. Because if you lie to him, yeah, you can get fired for that. But if nothing comes out, there's nothing to talk about, right? He is still collecting paychecks. And every check that he gets is about $200,000. So between now and April... He's got at least two more of those coming in, if not more. Smart move by Will Wade. Now, if I was LSU, I would not care if he lied to me or not. I would not care if he didn't want to meet with me. I would play him right now. My stance on this is firm. You heard it last week. I would play him, or I would I would have him on the bench. I would have Javante Smart coaching or playing. Got to get all these words right. Uh, I would have Will Wade coaching, I would have Javante Smart playing, and I would take my shot to see if I could make it to a Final Four. That's absolutely what I would do. The reason being, you're never going to get this season back. And if something did go wrong, they're going to vacate all the stuff that happened already anyway. You're going to vacate your SEC uh, championship, you're going to vacate all of these wins, because Smart has played a lot this year. So you're going to have to vacate anyway. Go out, try and win you an SEC tournament because the bracket could not have played out any better for him. I mean, my goodness, first round, or well, I guess second round game, quarterfinals, they're going to play either Florida or Arkansas. Next semifinals, they're going to play either South Carolina or Auburn, more than likely. And then after that, then you finally got Kentucky or Tennessee, which you beat both of them anyway. So... I would absolutely play Will, or coach Will Wade, have him on the bench. He is a just an incredible in-game coach. He knows by watching the game how to maximize advantages and mismatches, right? Put him on the floor. Let it happen. Who cares? Look, if you have to fire him after the season, you got to fire him. In the meantime, you're still paying him. Put him out there. Go take your best shot at this thing and see what happens. If it were me, 
there's no way I'd be cooperating with the NCAA on anything. I tell them to prove it. That's all you can do. And if they want to, if they tell you to fire your coach anyway, if they give him a show cause, what does it hurt to go on and have him coach right now anyway? You're still probably going to get a postseason ban. I mean, it, that's it's ridiculous right now if you are a big time organization to ever cooperate with the NCAA. The worst they can do is what they're probably going to do anyway. The fact that you sat him out the last game of the regular season and through the postseason doesn't matter. Because if you lose Will Wade, you're going to have to go out and get somebody else. You're going to have to start this whole thing over again. You're probably not going to make the postseason anyway. I mean, a lot of these guys are going to be going to the NBA, right? Yeah, we'll see what happens. I've got uh, several college basketball picks tonight. We won with NC State. We won with Virginia Tech. Let's go on and give you what we got for tonight. I've got uh, four other games and then a money line parlay for you. Uh, tonight, I've got Missouri minus three against Georgia. I bought a couple of points back or a point back on that. Uh, I've got Texas A&M minus three against Vanderbilt. Uh, after the the Billy Kennedy news yesterday, we probably could have talked about that today. But uh, Kennedy, here's my my stance on that. Yes, they made it to a Sweet 16 last year, but once you realize that you've got a losing hand, it is best to fold, right? Chris has been talking about that on this show for years. Once you got a losing hand, go on and fold it. Like, just pick up with the next one. That's the way it goes. So, But Texas A&M, I think they're going to fight hard for their coach tonight. Vanderbilt is awful. They have been demolished by everybody down the stretch. I'm taking A&M minus three, Missouri minus three, Marshall minus six and a half against Rice. Here's the deal with this. If you've never seen the Conference USA tournament, it is played in Frisco, Texas, and they have multiple games going on at the same time inside of the stadium. It's the craziest setup you will ever see. Marshall won this tournament last year. They've been there. They've done this thing. They they don't get distracted. they got a, a lot of the same team, and Marshall has played really well down the stretch. Remember, Marshall's the same team that upset Wichita State last year, who was a four seed. Marshall is a good basketball team. Uh, minus six and a half, that's not nearly enough against Rice. Rice has never even played in this tournament. They Their players don't understand what it's like to have other games going on at the same time. And yes, you can talk about AAU ball, summer ball, whatever. It's different, right? This is just a different deal. You're playing inside of a stadium. The sight lines are going to be different. The optics are different for you to be able to make shots. Marshall's been there before, done this thing. I like Marshall minus six and a half. And then I'm going to take California plus 11. All right, so I bought a point back on that. It was it was plus 10, but I'm doing plus 11 uh, against Colorado. So this thing's in Las Vegas. Both of these teams won games down the stretch. They're both on three-game winning streaks. They've both covered three straight. Cal played awful early in the year, and then at some point in the last, you know, I guess three games ago, they flipped a switch. They are playing great defense right now. I think because this is a conference tournament, because Colorado uh, has already beaten California once this year, I expect this to be a much tighter game than 11 points. So I'm going Cal plus 11. Here's your money line parlay. This is plus 175, so you bet 10 bucks you're going to win back 17. Here's the deal. Um, da, 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 Syracuse, going with that one. Air Force. Louisville, Oregon, and Marshall. That's your five teams for your money line parlay. Syracuse, Air Force, Louisville, Oregon, and Marshall. Ten bucks, win you back seventeen fifty. I like those odds. Let's roll with it. As always, you can find the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Just go up to the navigation bar, click on gambling picks, it's right there. Or you can click the link down in the description on YouTube or Facebook. We appreciate you guys. Hopefully, we'll see you out at Sam's Town down in Tunica, March 21st, March 22nd. Always go check out the daily picks. We'll have them up every day. They're going to be updated frequently because games are starting at all sorts of different times. And I don't do the show until the afternoon. So go keep up with the picks over there. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Share the show out. We love you. We will see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.